Hey, everybody, if you're working with a digital a camera in photography or as a photo artist, we know that we are working in something called RGB mode by default in a program like Photoshop. What does RGB stand for? Well, it stands for red, green, and blue. Somebody asks, what is LAB color space and when would I ever use that? Are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And before we get into LAB mode as a color space in Photoshop and when we might use this over other uh, modes, uh, if you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to increasing our creativity uh, out there as a photographer, thinking out of the box as a photographer and as a photo artist. Now, before we jump into the program, um, one of the people I was actually coached by years ago uh, is Dan Marglis. This is, I think, one of his last books he ever published. I'm not here to promote his book, but he is one of the top authorities in working in color, not only in Photoshop, but also uh, working in color for when it goes to print. And I will never forget, I was at a live workshop, uh, again, years ago. It had to be a couple hundred people in this room. It was huge. He's on stage, double screen. And somebody has a question. I just don't get it. I don't understand when would I ever use lab mode in Photoshop? And Dan just stared him down in a sarcastic way and basically said, lab mode? Where's their lab mode in Photoshop? And the guy goes, well, go over here, there. It's right over there. It's lab mode. And he goes, that's not lab mode. It's called LAB mode. He goes, we have RGB mode as a color space and LAB as a color space. We don't call LAB lab mode and we don't call RGB rugger mode. And that was his big joke. People would start laughing. So he's really a hard nose on. You don't call it lab mode. Um, call it lab mode if you want, if he's not around. But uh, I got a big kick out of that. It's called LAB mode. So we're going to take a look at that. And uh, there are unique situations that you might uh, want to work in Photoshop with that. So are we ready for this? Let's take a look. So let me open up Photoshop. I think I got it opened up. Oh, we don't need this. All right, so let's open up Photoshop. And I have this landscape image, and everybody knows if you've been following me for a while, uh, I'm not big on uh, images having that strong digital look. When it comes to portrait photography and, uh, you know, working with models, and uh, I don't want to see every, you know, pore on her face and, and nook and cranny. I just, I like a, a different sort of an analog type style and look. But when it comes to other types of photography, I know people like to be like an Ansel Adam. They want some things really tack sharp when it comes to their landscape images or other types of images. So I'm going to use a landscape image here. And again, I'm not a landscape photographer, but this is a great example to show how we could use uh, LAB mode as a color space. But before we do that uh, and jump into this, if you could do me a favor, please, if you're new to the channel, uh, like this, if you're not new to the channel, like this video anyhow, because it helps with the algorithm with uh, uh, YouTube. Also, um, subscribe if you have not subscribed. Hit the notification bell. That, that way, the next time I upload a video, uh, you'll get notified on a brand new video. Okay, so with this said, uh, let's take a look at, by default, we are always working in what's called RGB mode, which is based on light, red, green, and blue. So if we take a look here in the upper left-hand corner on our tab with this image uh, opened up, you can see that it is in RGB mode. Now, this is just a JPEG image. Uh, you could be opening up a RAW file and bring it into Photoshop, and it could be, uh, you know, a 16-bit image. It, it really doesn't matter. But by default, we're always in RGB mode. And um, it's hard to explain these modes if we see things in black and white. So I'm going to give you an example. If I go over to a category called channels, so channels right here, if I click on this, this shows me the RGB breakdown of this image. And if channels is not available, it should be by default. But if it's not, if you go under Windows drop down menu in Photoshop, 
right there. You should see channels right there. Just activate that and that panel should open up for you. But if I go over here, uh, the very top channel here is called RGB. It stands for red, green, and blue. This is your red channel. This is your green channel. And this is your blue channel. This is all based on light. All three of those, if they were stacked up on top of each other, like um, a slide, and we projected light through it, this is what you're going to get. And that's that. But when you're new, you're thinking, well, red, green, blue. I don't see red, green, or blue. I see black and white, black and white, black and white. Well, that's because by default in Photoshop, I'm going to open up something called Preferences. It would be Control-K, Command-K on a Mac. And when this opens up, <clears throat> excuse me, if you go to Interface as a category here, you're going to see down toward the bottom near the left side, it says Show Channels in Color. I'm going to activate that. And I'm going to click on OK to accept that. And now this helps explain a little bit better about RGB mode. There is red, there is green, and there is blue. Now imagine those are like three uh, slides. And if you stacked all the three slides on top of each other and projected light through it, this is what you would get. And that would be our main composite, uh, say, channel right there. So again, red, green, and blue is producing what we see here. And again, it's based on light. Well, LAB mode is a little bit different. And by the way, LAB mode space is the only space that I know of that in channels, they have two channels that have 100% color information with no detail and one channel that's 100% of your detailed image or, and we can call it luminosity. So an example, if I like look at the red channel, well, the red has the color red, but it also has detail information about the image. So it is blue and so it is green. And the third one, again, is all three together. This is what it looks like. Well, if I go to image at the very top here in Photoshop and go to mode on the flyout menu, you're going to see RGB color space. I'm going to change that to LAB color space. And when I do that, well, you didn't see any change in the image. And you wouldn't. But if I go over here to channels, if I take a look at the top one, this is what they call the, say, the three uh, channel layers, if you will, or, or categories combined equals our image we see here on the left side. But if I take a look at lightness, the lightness channel is 100% ded dedicated to the luminosity and the detail of the image. If I go to A, the A channel is 100% color. There's absolutely no detail in there. And if I go to the B channel, again, it's all color information, but there's no detail in there at all. The big deal about this has to do with sharpening an image where I don't want to sharpen an RGB mode because it could affect my color and shift colors a little bit based on how I sharpen that image. So a lot of photographers, especially when they're going to print and they're really you know, concerned about sharpening issues, they don't want any shift in color, they will temporarily change to LAB mode and do their change and sharpening there. Some will actually do their color correction also in there. So we'll talk about that. How do I do that in Photoshop? So I'm going to go to the very top one, which is um, all the three channels together come up to our composite channel right there. And this is where we see the photograph. Okay, I'm going to do uh, duplication of this control J, uh, command J on a Mac. So we can actually do a comparison um, between what I started with and uh, the changes I'm making in LAB mode. So I'm going to go to an adjustment layer here, and I'm going to choose to demo this curves. And when curves opens up, you're going to see here, it says lightness. And lightness will do exactly what it's supposed to do. And that is if I push this up, I'm lighting this image a little bit more. If I pull it down, I'm darkening. If you do like an S curve to add contrast and stuff, uh, that's fine. Uh, but again, um, this is just a quick adjustment to show you the, the brightness. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. If I go to the drop-down menu and I choose the A 
channel here and I do this, this is equivalent to something called tinting. If you're in camera raw, we know we have sliders for tint and in uh, Lightroom also has sliders for tinting. And this is equivalent to tinting, but you're actually doing it in Photoshop in the curves adjustment layer right there. The other channel, which is the B channel, if I do the same thing, move this up, this is equivalent to warming up an image and cooling down an image. Same thing we have a slider in um, Camera Raw and also in Adobe Lightroom. So this is adjusting our temperature of our image. So it's just a, a different way. Okay, but you can really fine tune unique ways in here, a little bit more control here that you cannot do in Lightroom or in um, uh, uh, Camera Raw. Uh, this is the area that is a little bit more creative and, and more powerful. So I'm just gonna move off on that. So let me show you how a lot of people will actually use this mode temporarily. If they're not doing color correction, but they wanna really sharpen an image, they will go to the channels area here, select this, and let me come down over here so we can actually see this. So I'm gonna click on this. So I'm not on the adjustment layer. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the adjustment layer for right now. We don't need that. And uh, I'm gonna be on the lightness channel. And this shows me all the detail. Remember, A and B is 100% color information. Lightness is the only channel that doesn't have any color information. It is all detail information. So in here, if I want, I can change my luminosity if I wish um, by applying a curves, or um, I can do something like sharpen. So I'm gonna over-exaggerate sharpen for a minute. I'm gonna go to filter drop-down menu, come down to sharpen, and I'm just gonna pick like um, unsharp mask. It, it doesn't really matter, whatever preference you like in sharpening. And I'm just going to play with these sliders a bit. I'm going to be over aggressive so we can see this. So there's a before, after, before, and after when I'm adjusting the sharpness of the lightness channel. Now, the cool thing about this is when I'm sharpening this image, I'm not shifting and affecting any, any color information. That's the beauty of sharpening in LAB mode under the lightness channel. And so if you're concerned about color shifting a little bit, or even a lot of times you're gonna get slightly digital noise and color and you don't see it. And if you're sharpening in RGB mode, it could actually enhance your digital noise that's in color into your image. This way, if I break this down, I'm not gonna enhance any kind of digital noise and color. And if I do have bad color noise for some reason, like under low light, a lot of people will do this. Professionals know to go to the A channel and they'll go to filter, drop down menu, blur, and they'll choose Gaussian blur. And usually they'll use about three pixels or so. It's really based on the resolution and size of your image to blur the color information. Because again, you're not blurring any detail information. And then they would do the same thing to the B channel. And that just sort of cleaned up any kind of color digital noise and will not be enhanced when you go to the lightness channel and sharpen that image. So after I did this, this is the uh, end result. So this is a before, after, before, after. And again, I'm over exaggerating the sharpness uh, because I know YouTube uh, with their algorithms actually compress these videos. And a lot of times subtle changes you cannot see, um, but I can, you know, on my monitor, but you might not see that on the YouTube channel. So I, I was very aggressive on this. The key thing with this, again, is I had absolutely no shift in color in sharpening. You can actually go over here to the lightness channel again. And if you want, you could decide to go to, uh, I'll just go to curves again, and I'll go to the, the lightness channel here. And again, if I want to do a heavy contrast or whatever, uh, I'm doing this on the lightness channel, which means as I apply this, I'm not shifting any color information because it's done on that channel by itself. So pretty cool 
area to be in. Uh, I just did a large uh, three foot by four foot canvas print when I was out in Moab uh, a few months ago. And uh, I, I just wanted to sharpen that image up a bit because I was blowing it up really big and it just came out beautiful. But this is the way I had sharpened that image. And that was using this method with LAB mode. So hopefully this uh, helps you out a little bit about understanding LAB mode. And um, again, hopefully uh, you've learned something. And if you could do me a favor, I talked about this uh, in my past videos. Um, check out, um, you know, to, to help encourage me to keep doing uh, videos. Because again, this is not uh, monetized on YouTube because my channel is not that big. But there's buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. I appreciate if you guys uh, on a volunteer basis could buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, again, I'll have the information here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, it is all one word, and that is buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. I appreciate that. Uh, also, uh, if you go to the other tab I had shown before, uh, you could actually see a, a video that you could actually download with the training software on doing something called frames. Okay, so with that out of the way, if you could, again, um, I'm going to throw a project out to you, and that is I'd love to have you take one of your images, open it up in Photoshop, and experiment in LAB mode and do some comparisons of if I sharpen an image in RGB, I mean, really push it and then do the same thing the way I just showed you in LAB mode and see the difference between the two. Now, a lot of times uh, things on your monitor may not show up. It tends to show up, especially when you go to print on your images. But um, again, LAB mode, I use it quite often for unique situations. So again, hope you learned something. Let me end this like I normally do. That is, get that camera out. Literally think out of the box creatively. Until next time, see ya!